With over 20 years in providing quality service, Apex Radiology is Jamaica's premier diagnostic facility. Our services include CT scans, nuclear medicine, ultrasounds, x-rays, and more. We have three easily accessible locations in the Kingston area and one in Ocheres. With our mission to provide exceptional and affordable healthcare, Apex Radiology is a clear choice for your diagnostic needs. Welcome to the 2023 financial year earnings call for Image Plus Consultants Limited, aka Apex Radiology. I am Re Renee McDonald, your COO of Learn Grow Invest and your moderator for today. Please join me in welcoming the CEO of IPCL or Apex Radiology, Keisha Anderson. Hi, Renee. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to our shareholders and who I hope will be our potential shareholders after this earnings call. You are most welcome. We are happy to have you and I will hand over to you now to host your meeting. Thank you so much. All right, so um, it is actually my privilege to be able to present this earnings call on behalf of the over 90 hardworking professionals here at Image Plus Consultant. Having just listed in January of 2023, we are happy that we were able to meet our very first regulatory milestone in having our financials ready 60 days after our year end. And hosting this call today is, as we promised on the day of listing, to give some insight to our shareholders and future shareholders about our performance and what they can look forward to in the future. So to go through, I am today going to tell you a little bit about the company in terms of highlights or financial highlights. I will look at the outlook and share some closing remarks before Renee will help me in hosting some questions from you, our viewing, viewing audience. I gather we're across three platforms, as Renee said, so I welcome as much interaction as possible as we answer your questions and give you comfort to know that the company you invested in is one definitely for the future. So you can move along for me, Renee. Actually, let me let me pause to do one thing. Let me pause just to say a word of prayer. And for those minded on the platform who would want to join me, let us pray. Father God, we give thanks for today. I thank you, dear Lord, for giving the leaders of this company vision. I thank you, dear Lord, for our founders. I thank you, dear Lord, for the many shareholders who chose to put their hard-earned funds in this company to help us grow. I thank you, dear Lord, for our team members, the people who put their heart and their passion into making a difference for healthcare in Jamaica for our doctors. I lift them up, dear Lord, and ask you to continue to give them wisdom. Now, as I go through, dear Lord, let the words from my mouth truly reflect the efforts and the hearts of the entire team and give clarity to our shareholders. And in your precious name, I pray and I put this meeting before you. Amen. Okay. Thanks, Renee. All right, I wanted to start by just emphasizing that people really are at the heart of all we do. On the screen here, you see two snapshots of the a day in the life of Apex Radiology, which was consultants, and you actually see that we celebrated our 26th anniversary by worshiping together at the Transform Life Church um, earlier this year on February 26, I believe it is, which was actually our, our 27th anniversary to the day. And then we participated as a team earlier in the month in the Sigma run. And normally the company sponsors um, team members to participate. We had a large team this year, both from Image Plus and also from the company, which we have a 30% stakeholding Winchester MRI. And we were happy to join in person and to support this worthy cause while building our camaraderie and our bond as a team. People continue to be at the center of what we do also because there are two important things that we do to give back outside of sponsorships and donations that we will do from time to time. In that one, we offer what we call a public patient price list. So we recognize that there will be Jamaicans who are referred from clinics and public hospitals that may not be able to, they don't have insurance and they may not be able to have all the 
funds in hand. So we, we do offer discounts and we have a public patient price list. And secondly, we actually participate in the Ministry of Health Extended Healthcare Service Delivery Project, which we believe is an important public-private partnership because we don't think that the public hospitals will at any point in time be able to serve the needs of all Jamaicans who need to get diagnostic imaging services. And so our participation there is a signal, our commitment to the health of the nation and to say that we will offer these services and those rates are also at discounted rates. All the providers in the program offer the same discounted rates. And in so doing, we help to help patients in the public system get to a faster diagnosis and therefore faster treatment. Um, I was privy to a meeting with the permanent secretary where he shared that it actually reduces the bedtime for a patient. The last time he shared it, the, the stats with us was up to um, two and a half days. So we think it's important and we think it's, um, even though we could fill up that slot with more private patients at a higher revenue return, we balance it to ensure that we give back to Jamaica in that way. So people really are at the heart of what we do. So let's look at our, our company highlights and the performance for the financial year ended February 2023. So for this year, we actually did 54,840 more cases, which is an increase of over 18%. And this means that we actually saw 8,000 plus more um, patients, that, or, or not necessarily patients, but we did 8,000 more plus scans um, for the entire year, which would mean if you divide that by 12, that's what now, 600, 700, just over 700 more cases per month, um, which is a significant amount across all of our branches. We're able to do this because we're working, though not yet at perfection, on the efficiency in our room turnaround and in our scheduling guidelines to ensure that we can actually accommodate as many patients on a day without compromising the level of service that we offer. And you can imagine if you're sick and you get a, a scan to be done, you know you want to get your appointment as soon as possible. Um, our revenue is for the first time over $1 billion. It's the highest amount of revenue in the company's history. And it is actually, I think, a significant milestone that we hit the $1 billion mark. And it's driven really not because we did a price increase, but really because we did more cases, as I just, I just spoke to. So that's a 40% or over 40% increase year over year in revenue growth. I think I would also want to highlight as um, it was another milestone for the company that's our listing on January 20th, where we were able to go to the market and raise over 495 million is significant. We have no, well, we had at the time over 4,300 new shareholders. And so th those are significant milestones that kind of set the frame for the at the end of the last financial year um, and continue to lay the wicket for us as we move forward into this new financial year. So looking a little bit more at our financial position, um, and I know that uh, some of the shareholders would have looked at the actual numbers and would have actually seen the financial statement. So I'm not gonna go through every single line item in terms of what the numbers say, but just to try and give you some context behind it. Um, so of course, our property plants and equipment would have um, improved because we actually bought in the last financial year a new fluoroscopy machine that is placed at our 3A Winchester location. And we would have also increased in the number of ultrasound units that we have so that we are able to do more than, um, have more than one ultrasound room at some of our facilities, actually at three of our four facilities. Um, trade and trade receivables would have increased because as we do more, we did over 1 billion in revenue, we're going to have an increase in receivables from our payer settlement. So that would be from the settlements from our insurance companies and the Ministry of Health and any other doctor offices or companies that we offer credit credit terms to. Um, as it relates to our cash and cash equivalents, I think nothing really significant to stay there, but two main takeaways here is our total assets would have grown to, to 1.6 billion. Our shareholders' equity um, would have also increased to, to 938. Renee? Okay. I'm not seeing, Renee, I think I lost you for a minute there. I'm sorry, you, you're controlling the slides for me. <laughs> yes, no no problem. We are on the liabilities and equity slide now. Thank you so much. Are you I'm seeing sorry. it? 
Yes, I am now seeing it. Okay, Thank awesome. you so much. All right, so our borrowings would have gone up in the last um, financial year because we actually funded that um, fluoroscopy unit as, as a loan through one of our um, one of our bankers and our trade and payables would have gone down that figure really we don't keep a large um, balance in terms of payables because we tend to the bulk of that would be between our professional fees or the persons who supply the larger items such as contrasts that we do use in some of our ct studies and those credit terms tend to be anywhere from two to um, six weeks and for our doctor fees we, we clear those up for the prior month in the first week of the new month so um, nothing significant there and of course the retained earnings would have um, increased based on the level of, of profit that we are generating and our share capital based on the IPO. Thanks. Um, highlighting our PL performance, um, we spoke about our revenues already. Here, the cost of goods sold would seem to increase significantly, and it's not so much that we're only using more items in, in more medical or um, imaging supply items in delivering the services, but that also some of our pharmaceuticals, um, we do purchase overseas just at the time that we need them and at, with some fluctuations in the, in the exchange rate. Um, that price would have gone up at different points in the year. Plus, we increased the number of nuclear medicine um, studies that we actually did. So we had to purchase more pharmaceutical. Our admin expenses were able through prudent expense management to keep it um, just above inflation. At um, inflation for this year, we had given, we, well, we, we, we always give our team members a cost of living increase once we can afford it and the people at the heart of what we do and we truly believe if our team members are happy they'll be able to serve our patients in the in their best interest so um the bulk of our admin expenses outside of our utilities and our rental agreements where we do rent properties etc would be our staff costs um, but i do believe that managing it only to an increase of 14 percent which offsets the high increase in cost of goods sold um, is actually helping us to deliver um, the increase in operating profit i would just like to highlight here then that our profit after tax figure would have increased by over 150% year over year. And um, in this year, we would have had the income tax impact for 10 of the 12 months because our listing was at the end of um, January. And so therefore for future, the profit before tax won't be um, impacted, it might not be the best word, but it won't have to um, have the effect of, of tax applied, income tax applied. So um, the future continues to look to look bright. All our key financial ratios are looking good personally. I'd like to see our return on equity being, even though it's over 25% um, trend back upwards, um, but I believe that given all the plans we have and how we intend to continue to use our assets to, to generate revenue at all, all our key financial ratios will continue, continue to improve. So I suppose um, the question could be, what does the future hold? So if, if you go along, Renee, to the, to the outlook slide, because I suppose if there are any questions around the financial ratios or the indicators, then those will come from, from your audience. And then, and then I can answer. So the future, what does the future hold? So we continue to do um, cases per day at the same kind of run rate that we were doing towards the end of financial year 2023. Um, so we anticipate that our case count will continue to grow. We also anticipate that because we're going to be offering two new modalities, we should see towards the third quarter onwards a uh, faster rate of growth because we're going to be offering MRI and mammography scans through our location in Otrius and through our location at Mullines Road, the original flagship location, we'll be offering mammography um scans starting very soon uh the ultras location being expanded will allow us to really facilitate more patients we actually have a special 
entry area for our hospital patients so that they too are comfortable whether they are um, able to walk in as outpatients of the hospital or they actually have to come in a stretcher and be facilitated in our facility we have space for them to be to be really comfortable. Um, we continue to anticipate growth in our on-call services. So we started on-call in Otrios in November of 2021. So this year, financial year just ended, we would have had a whole year impact from Otrios. Um, we started in Kingston in November of 2022. And so we only had in the financial year just ended three months, but for the year ahead, a whole year impact of on-call services um, should be should be seen in our numbers. We continue to look for that flagship facility that we spoke about in Kingston. We had in, in indicated that it would be uh, something that we were seeking to use some of our funds raised towards. And what we are intending to do is to really find somewhere that can have more space to comfortably offer our services, but also to allow us to offer more um, services and to as I said earlier, in some locations, we have more than one room per modality and the opportunity does exist for that and will also allow us to build out our interventional suite to be able to even offer more of those, um, those types of studies. And so the, the question may be asked about our progress there, you know, the real estate market in, in Kingston is really very active and <laughs> our property is there today and gone tomorrow. We actually are very close to what we think uh, would be an ideal property, but I don't want to speak much about it because, you know, at the point of a sale agreement and all the things that go along with that, um, we want to see that we get to somewhere before we can concretize and really speak about that. So I'm hoping that the next earnings call at the end of quarter one, we'll have something more concrete to say about that. Um, we want to really look at our receivables and inventory management systems as we continue to grow and our receivables are growing. We want to ensure that we really develop the muscle and the bench strength in managing that. And for inventory management, of course, we don't want to be impacted by too many price fluctuations. And at the same time, we don't want to tie up too much of our cash in inventory that is easily sourced. So we're going to look at strengthening and building some bench strength in the company in that. Um, for care, the the... What we do recognize is that we have to, because people have a choice, yes, your doctors refer you, but because you have a choice, we have to ensure that things that matter to our patients are dealt with. So our wait time, we and, and, and I won't say that we have it perfectly, but we continue to work on improving it, but we're going to really make a, a more focused effort on that in this year. So our wait time and, of course, the entire patient experience, I can tell you that that's something that I take a lot of pride in when you hear a patient, somebody who's sick and really focused or, or concerned, or not even sick, but concerned about what they, they scan can reveal. And they really stop to take the time to thank the staff for feeling more like family than just a transaction they do with them. It makes a big difference. I want to ensure we continue to do that. And for public hospital interactions, that every member of the team that brings a patient to our facility, whether it be the ported ambulance driver, the doctor that refers, actually feel like we care. We're actually partnering with them in the in the care of of their patient that they're referring to us. Um, so that's going that's important for us to ensure that we continue to do. And then we from the 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 IPO and the more um, interest in the company, there's also persons who want to court us in terms of looking at some kind of um, partnership or us acquiring them. And so as those come across, we are looking at them in the best interest of our shareholders to ensure that they'll be adding something to, to the bottom line and our board is committed to doing that in a, in a timely manner and making the best choices on behalf of shareholders. So the future is bright. We're going to continue to grow in terms of our core business and we have opportunities that actually could um, accelerate the, the rate of growth of, of, of our revenues. So um, in closing, I before we, we get to the question, so I think what I wanted to, to really say to our shareholders is that you have bought a company that um, is not only a solid company in terms of our financial results, with solid leadership, people who know what they're doing. Our doctors are, I would like to say, um, some of the best in the industry. We, our radiographer team is very 
passionate about what they do. They're always learning and continue to learn. They're all qualified. And we have more persons actually um, trying to join our team. Oh, they, they go through continuous training. They're now actually preparing to be able to deliver those uh, modalities, MRI and mammography. So you have a, a team that is our leaders in their own right, in their field, the technical field. You have a team of customer service professionals who um, are not looking at patients as just numbers. And whereas we here at um, Control Tower may focus on what it all means and what it boils down to in terms of revenue, they are really focused on delivering the best care. We have a team that's focused on ensuring that our machines are um, kept in good working order and that we are innovative in acquiring the things that we need to do to be able to deliver um, first world services um, across all our modalities. You you actually bought into a company that is, is in it for the long term to make a difference in healthcare in Jamaica. I know that initially persons may have jitters around what's going on with a share price. I would say to you that remember when you're buying a stock, you're buying a stock for a more medium to long term um, investment purpose. And you're buying a stock such as Image Plus that has a good history in terms of um, dividend payout. We actually sent notice to the stock exchange to say that in a, at a meeting on May 16th, our board will consider the final dividend for the financial year 2023. And I believe given um, what we have in terms of the financials and what's ahead of us in terms of what we need to do, that the, that the board management will carry a recommendation for a dividend and more and that will come after the board deliberates. So, you know, continue to believe in us. You can help us with our growth by... Um, when you get your own scans to do um, using our services and nothing is more um, impactful than the owner of a company giving your feedback on their company right so we look forward to being able to serve you you have a company that's looking to um, deepen our um, knowledge of what's happening in development in the in the field and because our radiologists are always um, attending I, I guess I don't know if Training may sound too simplistic in how I say it, but of course, keeping current with developments in, in their field. And uh, I have never seen so many applications for people to work at all levels in an organization as we have had um, since December when our information was out there. But it makes it exciting. I feel privileged to be able to lead this charge. And I thank you for joining us on the journey and look forward to the days ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that, Keisha. Our audience is quite engaged. There are a number of questions waiting for you. So uh, we'll jump right in and see how many, see if we can get through all of them. And a number of them are from Elaine. So that's let's, fine. Let's, that's good. <laughs> let's start with the first one. What is the company doing to manage the exploding receivables on the books? Okay, thanks for the question, Aline. So um, I do exploding. I'm going to take it to mean the good side of it. I mean, it's it's growing at a at a um, rapid pace. So remember, we are doing more scans. Um, so therefore, our receivables would would be growing. A large portion of the receivables that we do have on hand now are between either our Ministry of Health partners or our insurance partners. The insurance settlements tend to happen in a very routine and timely framework between you know one to two weeks. Our Ministry of Health um, receivables really are impacted sometimes just by a payout date and a cash flow um, scenario for them. But I would say that there's no receivable that we don't have now. We don't have a commitment for. So even the ones that have grown on the Ministry of Health portfolio, we have a commitment that those will be paid within a particular time period that we're comfortable with. But the receivables have never yet stopped us from being able to manage um, the cash flow needs of the company. You know, So we keep it quite tight. Um, so I believe that we um, are going to see what else that we can do in terms of improving the process. However, at this point in time, we have no concern about the receivables because we have commitments to pay them all. Thank you so much. Was the property identified for the new location? And if so, is it just land or a building that was identified? Sure. All right. So it, because the real estate market is so active and dynamic, um, we have looked at many options. So we tried to find out first what the appetite of our board was for how we should go forward. And I think pretty much the idea is that we would like to 
um, either own where we are or have a very, very long-term lease um, at as best we can to determine a, a, the, the right kind of price and how the increases in that lease would occur. Um, so it has, we've been looking at all options. At this current point in time, the one that's on the table is actually land, and we believe if it is if we do move ahead with this one at a development time frame based on where it is and what we actually need to do would be about twelve months out. Okay. How has the hike in insurance affected the company, and are all the equipment that you use insured? Yes, everything that we do use is insured. Um, and the hike in insurance um, meant that our premiums uh, were, were doubled. Um, because if you think about where the market was at last year, it was really at, there was a, there's stiff competition in the industry. And so really maybe the, the, we were all benefiting from rates below where they should be. Um, in the doubling of it, still it is still, we believe, affordable, but it did double based on the change in, in, in premium rates that were applied. Okay, thank you for that. What are the fire preventative measures like and are they up to date? Yes, they're up to date. And um, I smiled when I saw that question because we actually just, because we moved out Rios, we actually just did our um, fire inspection a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and so, yes, we're up to date in terms of just the very basic things that you need to have, you know, the emergency exits, the um, fire alarms, the number of extinguishers, and in our existing facilities, we are up to date. We have to meet the standards of our regulator, the Hazardous Substance Radiation Authority, and the um, co-op, the, 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 the fire department to actually come and do their um, inspections is the right word to use. And I'm happy to say that we're up to date and compliant. Thank you for that. And are all your equipment owned by you? The company, yes, we own everything that we use. Um, the, the, it is the industry is one in which it will be very hard to, for a new entrant because of the capital investment required for the cost of equipment. And even though as, um, as days go by and we know technology gets a little cheaper, the cost of equipment can still be prohibitive and we own everything that we actually use. Okay. And are you looking to expand outside of Jamaica? Mm -hmm. um, there, there. There are different ways we can, if we so choose. Um, we are actually look, going to look at that question. What does it look like in the short term or medium term, I should say, really more like a two-year horizon for the entity in our upcoming um, board half half year, right before half year kind of strategic retreat, or I shouldn't say half year, but it's almost half year to when we last had this discussion before we were going public. And so we are going to be talking about matters such as that and to consider what it looks like what does expansion outside of jamaica look like for a diagnostic imaging company such as ours so it's not just a straightforward answer in terms of setting up, setting up brick and mortar it could be a partnership it could be many different things or it could actually be offering medical tourism for people to come here and and um, use our services absolutely and elaine's final question is as a ceo are you looking to increase your stake in the company <laughs> that's a good question and and certainly um i am I, I i smile because my youngest son is just that is just entering university and um based on what he's able to do for himself i may have a little more cash because he got a scholarship so um we my husband and i we will have opportunity and of course we will as a matter of fact the price is right now with the trade the shares trading so close to the two dollar ipo price <laughs> okay thank you for that and elaine also wants to say congratulations to the ipcl management and team for mm -hmm. the billion dollar revenue that mm -hmm. you would have thank generated you. in that and I, I take it is a very active shareholder is interested in his company because he has so many questions <laughs> <laughs> that is correct that is correct and he's thank a very active them. member of the community so okay. thank you as always elaine and Omar has a question. Is there an update on the progress of the new location as indicated in the prospectus? Okay, Omar, you might have missed when I said it, or sometimes I'm accused of speaking too quickly. So we have had options, options currently on the table at the point of um, looking at a sale agreement. And so I'm hoping in the Q1 earnings call, I can tell you a little bit more about that, but I don't want to put the cart before the horse, you know. 
Okay, and Devon is asking, in light of how your listed competitor has struggled with equipment and otherwise since their listing, is there or has there ever been any consideration to acquire or purchase a position in Elite? Mm -hmm. So I, I think the, the, I'd answer the question two ways. One, we, are, we would never look at an opportunity for inorganic growth, um, such as purchasing um, a competitor. Um, what I would say is, and you know, so I said purchasing a competitor, I didn't say purchasing a stake in, because I believe how we feel at this point is that we would, anything that we are purchasing, we would want some kind of management control so we can maximize the return from that investment. There will be definitely opportunities to consolidate some areas um, if you purchase somebody who's in the same field. Um, and you also have to be mindful that protocols and things may change just based on the different um, radars that work in an, in, in an entity. And so we'd want to be able to influence to maximize the return on such an acquisition for shareholders. So our current position is that we would want some kind of majority stake. Um, nothing is off the table. Um, the, the industry is ripe for some amount of consolidation, but I would be out of turn to speak on any one particular company at this time. Okay, we can appreciate that. And we have a few community questions. One such is, what is the outlook for revenues for 2024? Good. <laughs> <laughs> the future Good. is bright, um, right? <laughs> so, so, so it, what I would say is that, um, well, Q, Q4 would have been, let me see now, um, December, January, February. I would say that because we, the, the pace that we picked up in terms of the number of cases that we're doing per month, um, if you think about it, you maybe start slow at the start of the year and gradually increase. Our momentum has not died down. You will find that in some months, like a month like April, where you would have less working days, even though we do offer on-call services, your routine patient count won't be the same. Um, but we, we, we anticipate revenues looking very good for the year ahead. We have started strong. And the earnings call for Q1 is just a few weeks away. <laughs> and we look forward to it. Rohan is asking, are there any plans for a second location in St. Anne, possibly in Drax Hall? Okay, so Ron, we, we actually were approached by a, a doctor to look at a location not in Drax Hall, just a, a few minutes up from, from Drax Hall, and I say up if you're headed towards Montego Bay. Um, we are exploring that in such a location, it wouldn't be for all the modalities, but maybe the ones that would be a little easier to, to execute. Um, so we are exploring that. And if we're able to settle in terms of some kind of lease arrangements that are comfortable for us, um, with a quick time to start up, we will be um, trying to get that done in this financial year, 2024. Okay, that is great. Another community question, how close is very close <laughs> to getting the property in Kingston? Why well, I don't know why the community is resting on my brain. So today, you know, I said, <laughs> we are looking at the sale agreement. No, a sale agreement means that you identify something. If it's a close bidding kind of position, you're at the forefront of it. So we're looking at the sale agreement now. And the lawyers have to do their work on behalf of you or shareholders. So let's hope in the Q1 earnings call, I can tell you that we have signed it. <laughs> we hope can you expand more on the strategy for inorganic growth okay all right um so well I, i'm assuming that everybody is clear in terms of what i mean by inorganic growth that really is not just from um increasing number of patients that come through our location but from buying another entity or being a part of another entity that's already there with a existing patient kind of loyalty or following um and so we because we're out there and, and it's known persons who probably never thought about it before have um been calling or approaching um a broker on their behalf to kind of speak to us about it um that takes some time for some persons especially doctors who started the practice from scratch it's almost like a child that you know deciding that you're going to give up a child for adoption or to, to go away to school maybe it's another way to look at it you know so um 
as persons go through that process, they work it through in terms of what it would mean to them. They have to get help to put it together and to come to us. We have not yet gotten to the point where we're targeted anybody like to say, okay, we want to go and make an um, offer to this company or have a discussion with this company. Uh, it's just as they come to us, we are we're looking at the opportunities. And we would have to bring something to the table, you know, for us to really think about it. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So the, the next question, again, from our community is, what are the opportunities to increase footprint or scope of services? Okay. All right. So the, um, how you increase your scope of service will be through the new modalities. So MRI and mammography are the two main other ones that are offered, um, meaning more routine and everyday that we don't offer. And this year, uh, well, we, we don't offer it ourselves wholly because with the stakeholding in um, Winchester MRI, we would have had some experience and understand we have board members who are also on that board, have an understanding of what it takes to be a part of a facility that offers that kind of imaging service. And so it will be the first time that we're not going to wholly offer those two modalities ourselves. There's not much left after that. And we're starting with, as I said earlier, with MRI in Ocherios and we're starting with mammography in Ocherius and in one of the Kingston locations. If we get that flagship location, the other location in Kingston, then also um, mammography will be offered there. Okay, thank you for that. Marlene is asking, how do you feel about the performance of the stock so far? Okay, so if I'm to be 100% honest, which I, I tend to be, I was actually a little disappointed to see on the first day of listing that persons were um, selling the stock for less than the, what they bought the stock for. But I gathered, you know, having done so much, some more research, I gathered that actually some people just don't really understand because in their mind, they're so accustomed to buying a $1 stock. People thought they're buying a $1 stock. And then, of course, the market in which we're operating and we're seeing um, stocks at their um, lowest over the last 52 weeks, we recognize that there are some challenges there as money, investor money is moving towards um other kind of cash type investments that are paying higher higher rates um, to them. So it's a little disappointing to me, but I believe that it has settled somewhat and I anticipate that I, I should see steady um, appreciation of the actual value of the stock. And I think, you know, the first, um, should the board so find it prudent to do, the first dividend declaration will actually, you know, augur well towards that. And when they continue to see stable and solid performance from the company in the quarters ahead, that we should see some improvement in the stock price. And, and I can feel a little um, more comforted by that because, I mean, even though it won't, it, it doesn't affect um, anybody who doesn't have an immediate need to, to capitalize some of their, their earnings on the stock. I just actually don't like to say anything um, below where it started. And you know? I guess that's my own competitive spirit. Mm -hmm. So be an advocate, talk about the company that you bought into and how well your company is doing, you know. I, I, what I would say is that the, the persons who see the value in the company and look at the numbers are actually um, looking for every opportunity to buy. Because we, we actually can see that from some of the or investors on the like pension fund and um, a mutual fund side. Thank you so much for that comprehensive answer. Omar is asking, has there been an improvement as it relates to the Winchester location finances? Okay, so when you say Winchester location, because we have a location at 3A Winchester um, and all the locations for Image Plus Apex Radiology are performing very well. They make up the, the performance of over a billion in revenue. As it relates to a 30% stake in Winchester MRI, that um, entity had some challenges as it relates to just equipment after they moved and they expanded. Um, those are being worked out by their board. I wouldn't be privy to say much more now, though, but I anticipate that in the future we should see ourselves being able to earn a dividend from the investment in that company. Okay, great. What is or was the impact of the pandemic on the company? Okay, so so I really can't say that the company was too negatively impacted by COVID-19. I would say that we did a couple of things to just really ensure that we were able to make it through um, and make it through well. Uh, actually, we were impacted in two months. I believe it was April of 2020 and another month. Um, enough to say, to say something about, and those were the months when you had um, the, the to the disaster risk management um, policies where you had actually shutdown of parishes, you know. So I remember when St. Catherine, um, there was no movement in St. Catherine. It impacted in terms of the number of patients that came from 
from St. Catherine to our, mm -hmm. to our facilities. Outside of that, because we are able to manage, you know, with your team A, team B scenarios, so if persons got sick, then we could actually, you know, get another team in place um, and other protocols like that. We hardly had team members impacted that impact out that impacted our operations um and we certainly didn't have a scenario where our revenues for more than two months were were impacted okay that's great to hear mm -hmm. devon asks can we expect that the dividend payouts will make up for the previous director's fees prior to listing <laughs> i would say devon that in the prospectus we kind of indicated where we were towards a dividend payout um kind of policy and I think we had said something about up to 55%. And, you know, we're decent people of our world once the company's in a position to be able to do so. So let's see what they, um, the, the directors are so minded on the 16th of May. Just listen closely. We'll hear something after that meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Keisha. And Neil Johnson is saying that there is a great location below the St. Anne's Bale Hospital immediately at the roundabout, and he hopes that you can get a suite there to benefit from the hospital patients. Okay, thank you for that, shareholder O'Neill. I will certainly check it out. <laughs> thank you. For that. Your shareholders are looking out. I'm telling you, I like that. <laughs> yes, so Elaine says, with a, with a path greater than two mil, strong growth potential, strong revenue generation, and a PE below 10, the company is at a bargain, in his opinion, and, and this is not financial advice. <laughs> I would and just I say men. <laughs> <laughs> and he also states that, yes, he is a proud shareholder. He's in the medical field, so he knows the value of the company. Thank you very much for that um, on behalf of the team. So I don't think we have any more questions from the community, but I do have a question for you. You had sure. mentioned um, nuclear medicine studies. Can you expand on that a little bit? Tell us more about what that entails. Okay, so I don't want to get myself in trouble from all the, from all the shareholders who are doctors. So I will give it to you in my layman as I understand it. Please do. <laughs> yeah, but um, in the treatment of... Um, I, w I believe, well, we do a lot of scans called like a thyroid scan, scan, a lung scan. We do radio iodine treatments of patients where it's a whole body um, scan or just a treatment of radio iodine. And they may measure certain things. I think I've heard the term from one of our radiologists, isotopes, etc. So I don't want to get myself into too much trouble running, but uh, it tends to be, I, I see a lot of patients who may have had a cancer diagnosis actually make use of that um, but what we can do is i believe if you go to our website you should see a little bit more information there and i will okay. certainly send it to you ask um, or one of our radiologists to write something and send it to you so you can share with your community and do justice to the question that you asked me <laughs> thank you so much i appreciate that mm -hmm. devon has another question um so, is is the is there, I think that should be, is there currently an ESOP program? And if not, will one be implemented or a share incentive program to encourage ownership among your employees? Okay, so we didn't do an ESOP program because just the whole cost to set up an administration of it is very um, expensive now, you know. Um, but in keeping with what ESOP was supposed or designed to do, what we did when we were going public is that we offered team members and allocation from the reserve pool based on their length of tenure with the company. And then we also offered loans of up to 50% of the cost of the shares they were allocated so that they would be able to afford it and they're able to pay back that loan over a period of time. So we're trying to keep with the spirit and the principle of having people be a part of what they're working so hard towards. Um, we, we do an incentive now, which is really a performance incentive and it really is more a cash incentive. I don't know if over time, um, the board would be so minded to look at something else, but that's what we do now, but we made it possible for our team members to participate in the initial um, public offer that we did. Okay, so thank you for that, Keisha. I will do a final call to our audience. Do you have any other questions for Keisha Anderson, CEO of IPCL? She is here to answer the questions based on the report of their financial year 2023. So while we're waiting to see if there are any additional questions, I do want to say 
thank you, Kisho, um, for for the the information that you've provided here so eloquently. It has it has been good to hear directly from you as the CEO of the company about the future of the company and the as well as the past performance. It has been refreshing to have this conversation. And if there are no further questions, I'm not seeing any additional questions at this point. So I will just hand over to you, Kisho, for final remarks to our audience. And I want to say thank you to our audience for being here with us, for, for spending the time and engaging with Kisha as CEO of IPCL. Thank you again. And I will see you in the next one. Over to you, Kisha. All right. Thanks, Renee. So to our shareholders and our future shareholders, I'd like to say a big thank you for your trust and confidence placed in the company. I'd like to encourage you, as you're so able to do what they call dollar cost average in buy some more shares in your company um i'd like to encourage you to to continue to be our advocate so if you have family and friends who are referred for some of the services that we offer feel free to to suggest that they consider coming to us um i believe that the future of the company you brought into is bright so we have a lot of positive things um working for us and we're going to always act in your best interest so Believe in us. Um, if you have your shares and you don't need any cash right now, keep your shares. Enjoy the dividends to come, should the, the board be so um, minded, and buy some more shares. And this is not financial advice. Thank you. And we look forward to updating you for our first quarter earnings call in early, I believe it will be July. Yes, that's right, right? March, April, May. Yeah, early July. All righty. Have a great afternoon. God bless you. With over 20 years in providing quality service, Apex Radiology is Jamaica's premier diagnostic facility. Our services include CT scans, nuclear medicine, ultrasounds, x-rays, and more. We have three easily accessible locations in the Kingston area and one in Ocheres. With our mission to provide exceptional and affordable healthcare, Apex Radiology is a clear choice for your diagnostic needs.